and just got the thumbs up. She, thumbs up. You're alive. You are alive. Now I see that. So, hope everybody's doing well this evening. Been out goofing off a little bit today where we could, and the weather's perfect out there. Uh, but uh, uh, just want to say hi to everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, uh, real quick announcement: um, tomorrow morning, uh, our uh, church service, and when I say our church service, our message will be will be going live at. Uh, 1058 and uh, uh, get started a few minutes after that uh, we're gonna be in Hebrews chapter 7 verses 11 through 28 so if you want to go ahead and read that go for it it's a great passage uh, I've, uh, I've been reading in, in the Hebrews the last couple of days and man it just kind of it, it almost reads like he's preaching to us and it probably may very well be that uh, it's just but tonight uh, we're going to read First uh, John chapter two, verses eighteen through twenty-seven. Here in just a moment, and then we're going to pray. And what we're going to pray for tonight really is uh, we're going to pray for all of the churches in our communities and in our uh, wherever we may be at uh, across the world, across the country. Uh, we're going to pray for them uh, because it is not easy not gathering together physically, uh, but uh, the tools that God has given us to use, uh, we're going to be grateful for those and we're going to use those. And so uh, we'll pray that uh, the churches continue to use those things, but also in using them that people are uh, um, attentive, uh, but not re attentive uh, only, but re also receptive. Uh, and uh, continue to to enjoy the things that are able to be put in front of them like that. So let's read First John, and this is a warning uh, against denying Jesus, and it, you know, and saying if you deny Jesus, uh, uh, that is the same thing as the Antichrist. So starting in verse eighteen of chapter two of First John, it says, "Dear children, this la this is the last hour." And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, see that, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Man, that very first, very first uh, uh, few words in this passage, it says, Dear children, this is the last hour. And uh, uh, with everything that's going on in our, in our country and in our world, 
uh, with uh, plagues and uh, locust swarms in Africa and earthquakes all over uh, the West. Uh, people will, will say that these are the, the end times and they are correct because we have been in the end times uh, the last days since Jesus ascended into heaven and we will be in the end times until Jesus comes back. Are they signs of uh, uh, God coming back, Jesus coming back soon? Who knows? I'm sure they were saying the same thing uh, when the Spanish flu was hitting in 1918 that the times are coming and Jesus is coming back soon. I hope he does. Uh, but until he does, we'll keep working, right? We'll keep striving away. Uh, I'm not gonna gonna sit here and try and predict the time. Uh, I'm just gonna work until he comes, uh, until it's until the time is right then. Uh, so for tonight, our prayer time, we're gonna pray for uh, all of the services uh, going out tomorrow. That uh, everything will go well. Uh, for the services in our communities, wherever you may be, uh, because I know there are people on here from different states, uh, and uh, that those who are watching are receptive to the Word of God that is going out, and that that not only that, that when they receive it, that then they act upon it. Uh, so let's pray. Lord, thank you for all that you have done for us and can you continue to do for us, Lord. We do uh, wait for that day when you return. But until then, Lord, we're going to keep working. We're going to keep, keep proclaiming the gospel uh, and striving away like we're supposed to be, Lord. Lord, uh, we know that uh, these last few weeks have been different, uh, even for the biggest of churches, uh, just strictly live streaming is different than what they're used to. Lord, from the big to the small, it, it, this has affected us all. Uh, and that's okay. That's okay because you provided an avenue to still get your word out, even when we didn't think, we, we didn't know what we were doing at first. Lord, thank you for uh, the, the ways that you have given us to proclaim your word. Uh, when we can't physically gather together like, like we would love to. Lord, that, that we have uh, YouTube and Facebook and all, any other way, the Zoom meetings and all the different things, Lord, that, that are there for us uh, to use, Lord. And we just ask that uh, you continue to use those, even past when we're able to, to meet together, Lord, because we know that the audience that you're reaching is, is big, it's uh, different than maybe normal, and that it is uh, something that you, you want. You want us to use it, Lord, and you're showing us how to right now. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, as your word is proclaimed tomorrow through all of these different ways, we ask that uh, those who are hearing be receptive, uh, Lord, and that they, they hear your word and that they hear what you are wanting from them, from your word, that you want us to, to respond to your word with our actions, with our words, and with our life being given back to you, Lord. And uh, we know that there are people who will be watching who have not accepted you or believed in you as their, their Savior, Lord. We ask that those, uh, those moments happen tomorrow, Lord, that you draw them uh, into your presence, Lord. Uh, uh, and for those of us who, who have accepted you as our Savior, Lord, that, that we feel uh, the call in our lives to get up and work, uh, to go out and to proclaim your gospel uh, boldly and loudly with our actions and our words out in this world, Lord. Thank you uh, for the beautiful weather you've given us today, Lord. Thank you for the time that you've given us with our families uh, Lord, and bringing us uh, back together in that sense and uh, giving us some time where we're not quite as busy, but we can focus on, on our families and we can focus on you, Lord. And we ask that you uh, continue to guide us in those things and give us patience in those things, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
So last night we we kind of finished up talking about being at um, Open Arms uh, Fellowship Baptist Church in Lone Oak. That's where my dad was pastor. Lucy and I were were not on any part of the staff there. We were just there to to help and to serve in whatever way uh, we needed to and uh, to uh, be a part of. Uh, the church in that community. Uh, but from there, we went to Woosley Baptist Church, which is in Point, Texas. Uh, know this, I've only pastored in uh, really big cities and really big churches. Uh, Dickens had a population of over, you know, just over 100, and the church size was probably in the mid 20s to mid 30s, depending on the week. In point, uh, you know, you're typically in the, the 30s, and point is another one of those giant, giant towns with, with very few people, uh, population well under a thousand. Uh, and so then we come to American Falls, and it's like just a booming metropolis, right? Because uh, the population here is like 4,000 people, and the church size were 25 to 35 typically on any given. Uh, Sunday, but so I always go to really big, big places uh, so that there's lots of people, and I say that sarcastically. Uh, we've always been at smaller churches and enjoyed that, but we went to to Woosley. They called us to be pastor. Now I, I mentioned, and we're going to talk more about Woosley tomorrow night and talk about some uh, some of the things at Woosley. But um, tonight, I, I was as I as I was thinking about this. In becoming a pastor, there's a couple of things that, that happen. Or in, in being in ministry, whether it's a, a pastor or any other form of ministry, uh, youth ministry, music ministry, uh, becoming a deacon or an elder in a church, there, there are some things that, that go along with that. Uh, and for a pastor, one of those things is churches license you. Um, and what that means is that uh, they, they certify that you have surrendered your life to the ministry and when they license you, it allows you to be able to do uh, weddings and funerals and different things. Really, more, more importantly, weddings there because you have to be licensed to, to do a wedding. Um, and and that's, that's kind of one of the, the side things there. But then not only license, but they ordain you. Um, and that it, it is a, uh, an ordaining of a person is... Um, if you look in scripture and with Paul and Barnabas or in the book of Timothy, you would see the word appointed uh, there in that place, basically. And so a church is appointing or ordaining, which means to set, they're setting you, saying that you are set apart to do the work of that position, whether it's youth ministry or pastor or whatever it may be in a church, they're ordaining. Now, in a Baptist church, the, the way that an ordination service goes, um, and I know uh, there's, um, I think, at least one person watching this that has been ordained as well, uh, but the way that it goes is that you go to uh, a, a, a church, more than likely, um, and you meet with a group of peers, uh, and they ask you questions, and basically what they're, what they're doing is they are just working out, testing, approving uh, your knowledge, your calling. Uh, you know, they may give advice, they may suggest things, they may give some criticism, but really they're just there to uh, kind of, for checks and balances to make sure that it, you're not just anybody who can be a pastor or should be a pastor of a church. Uh, God is, I believe God has called and uh, set apart uh, certain people to be uh, pastors of church. And you don't want just anybody to get up. You want them to, to make sure that they're living correctly uh, according to the scripture, that they are meeting the requirements that God has put in scripture. And so the, the guys come together and they, they question uh, those things. They just, and they're not questioning, they're asking questions uh, and uh, looking for responses and um, 
just kind of growing up together, really, is kind of the way I, I see it. Uh, and it's a good thing to do. Uh, and that is followed by a, a service where there's preaching and singing and, and, and really a celebration of what God is calling someone to do in their life and setting them apart to do that for the remainder of their lives. Uh, I always say, you know, somebody says, well, you know, what do you, you know, you talk about retirement. I don't, I, I don't think about retirement because I think I can preach forever. Um, my dad's still preaching. Uh, my, I know, I know if, if, if my grandfather, uh, Papa Bill could, he probably would. And if you sat down and visited with him for a few minutes, you would get a sermon and it would be really good, uh, by the way. And the same goes for for Papa, who who's uh, done a uh, bit of pastor, and um, those are both my grandfathers. I come from a long line of great godly men uh, in in my life, and I've been blessed with that. But to to pastor at Woosley, that was one of the things that they asked uh, that a church ordained me, uh, and so we did that before we left. Uh, Open Arms Fellowship Baptist Church, I was, was ordained, and so I was set apart for the ministry. That's why I do what I do. I, I don't do the car business for that. I do the car business for that to, to pay for uh, bills and to provide a life for my kids and to not have to need a bunch of money from elsewhere. Uh, I preach because that's what God has called me to do. I pastor because that's what God has called me to do. And that ordination service kind of validates that. It validates uh, that, you know, hey, this guy uh, should be doing this. We believe and we agree with God um, that this person should be pastoring and preaching. And so that's, that's one, a couple of the things that go on. Uh, for someone going into the ministry. Uh, and then at Woosley, uh, we, we got there not long after Riley was born, I, I believe. And, and I'll tell you this, and, and we won't do much more tonight. We'll talk more about them tomorrow night. They are some of the nicest and greatest people we have ever uh, been a part of in, in the church. Uh, still love all of those uh, the people at that church, and I still think about them. Uh, I know Avon has been watching uh, some of this, and just a, a great uh, godly lady that, that we can learn from. And, uh, and, and then I'll tell you, you know, we'll talk about food just a little bit because there was more coconut pie, more chocolate pie, and Twinkies in that church than anywhere I've ever been, and I loved it. I loved it. Um, and I, I'll, a quick story because we would have potlucks there and everybody would get in line for the potluck and we would pray and uh, everybody would start going through the line and I would go eat a piece of pie until the line went down and then I'd get my food and I would eat uh, and then I would have dessert after that um, and so typically I had multiple uh, pieces of pie uh, at those potlucks and then Frankie sweet Frankie so just the sweetest little old lady uh, always there unless she was sick and and she's in heaven today and she's rejoicing with Jesus uh, but uh, Frankie knew that I liked Twinkies and so at every potluck there was a box of Twinkies uh, and I'll never forget that the only thing that was, uh, was, was weird is when Twinkies weren't being made for a little while, the, the sadness of the, the world at that point, and those, the knockoffs, uh, white cloud thingies or whatever they were called, she still brought those. And even though they weren't as good as Twinkies, we still ate them, uh, but, and, and we always will. Uh, tomorrow night we'll talk more about some of the people there at Woosley and the couple of the few years that we spent there. Uh, I'll tell you this: uh, we're going to talk about some of the some of the ladies there and the uh, 
uh, lives that they live because, man, they were prayer warriors. Uh, and we need those in our lives. Thanks for watching tonight. Hope all is well. Enjoy church tomorrow. Tomorrow night we'll be back here probably 6.30, 7 or 7.15, something like that. And uh, tomorrow night in the uh, intro, we're going to start putting five verses or five passages or scriptures uh, for you to look up and read. Uh, it's not something you have to do. Uh, but it's just something I thought we might do during the week of Easter uh, because we're not going to have any Easter egg hunts, so you might as well, you know, Easter egg hunt through your Bible for some good, good verses that maybe tell you a little bit about uh, uh, life and things that go on with what God has for us. So, again, thanks for watching and have a great night. That's all, folks.